Okay, we're back, and it's another episode of Ink Transfer Drawing with Mark Zimmerman, brought to you by Sanford Arts. And I'm just getting a nice even coat of ink on a sheet of plexiglass. And I run over across the studio and grab a sheet of paper because I'm not smart enough to put it right here where I'm working. <laughs> and I'm going to line it up inside that rectangle of tape. And tape it down so it can't move. What I'm going to do is an ink transfer drawing. I'm going to transfer ink to the front, which is front of the paper, which is face down right now, by drawing and rubbing on the back of the paper. That ink underneath there that I'm planning to transfer is inside a rectangle of tape, and I can I can feel that tape. I'm gonna poke this pen up in that corner, drag it along the edge of that tape. And that tells me where my ink is at. So anything I do outside that rectangle doesn't really matter. Anything, any pressure on the back of that paper though, with the pen, with my finger, with anything, transfers ink. Well, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to draw a tiny little beetle. Yeah, let's see, I see one leg here, two legs here, when I really, 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 really look. And this little beetle is on a prairie cone flower, Ratibida. Columnifera is the scientific name. And he's got a little stripe on him. There, and a little stripe here. And he's shiny as can be. It's actually a black stripe, but he's shiny as can be, and so some of that black stripe is actually shiny enough, bright enough with the sunshine on him that um, that he doesn't. Um, it just shows up as white. All right. Um, so this cone flower kind of. So, there's all of that. Mm. 
Well, I don't know what parts of the flower are what anymore. Biology class was a long time ago. But I do know there's a pattern to these various parts and it kind of crosses. There's diagonal lines going in each direction. Then, that brings us to the petals. I don't know if you can see her on the floor, there's a little puppy down there. Cleo. Hey Cleo. Cleo has a Cleo has a wet frozen rag because she's teething and she seems to like that frozen cloth. So every little mark I make on the back of this paper transfers ink to the front. I'm just putting little drawn in, drawing in little shadows on the um, Should grab a little bridge. If I rest my hand on the back of that paper, that transfers ink too. So this little bridge was not so long ago that I don't know that these are petals. One little guy hiding back in here, too. And I can see a little bit of the stem, so I'm going to put that in here, too. It's just a straight little stem. Now I'm going to find a magic number. And I'm going to draw a line across right on that spot. It's the golden ratio of this 11 inch high rectangle. If I draw a golden ratio here, I should draw it at 6 and 3 quarter inches. And I 
And if I touch this with my finger, I transfer um, I transfer ink as well. So I'm going to transfer quite a bit of ink over here on the darker side of the flower. A little bit right there. I'm going to transfer a little bit down in here. Lightly and pushing a little harder at the bottom and a little lighter as I go up a little bit. We'll see how that worked. I'm going to grab that bridge again. Just because I want to darken this little line out here in the distance. Make it more of one dark shape than two lines. Okay. Now I can peek to see if I have what I want. I could show you the picture too. There's that little beetle on a uh, prairie coneflower, or tibida columnifera. I'm going to take a peek, so I just take the tape off on one side. Yeah, a little, a little darker here. And a little darker in this corner too. <laughs> Alright, I think it looks good. And the puppy has decided to slop, chew that slobbery rag on top of my foot down there. There is a prairie coneflower with a little beetle on it. I'm going to get the ink out of my way now and I'm going to splash a little color on here. Um, something you'll notice is that in the transfer everything comes out backwards. So, um, I think I'm going to grab a little backing board too. Because I can tell right now that I'm going to want to do some washes. And washes are easiest if you tip the paper, and this lets me tip the paper. Um, for now, it's my brush a little bit because I never know what I had in it last. Yeah, change your mind, get a different color. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to paint. Our, um, some shadows in the background uh, or on the, uh, not in the background, on the petals of the flower the yellow parts here so shadows here it's a yellow flower shadows are going to be violet I'm putting them in first because I want them to dry. Oh, and there's a cool shadow. So I'm having to look at this and paint it backwards as I so my left is right and right is left well let's see here I think I'm going to put a little purple in here too and a little purple up this side of that little bug 
And while I'm painting purple and I have my brush with purple in it, I'm going to paint this little distant ridge line too. So, I'm going to that up in there. This top of that's a little greenish. And shadows on green. Put a little blue in. Anywhere else I want a blue shadow? Yes, there is. On the green. There's little bits of green. Huh, they come this way, don't they? And then mostly a little fly drowning in my brown paint. There we go. <laughs> Get him out of there. I'm going to stir up a little burnt sienna, which is an earth tone. It quite literally is dirt. It comes from Siena, Italy. Oh, got it on my bug. Didn't mean to paint my bug brown. The bug is red. It's a little tiger beetle, I'm pretty sure is what that is. Thing is there are lots and lots and lots and lots of tiger beetles. Oh and I should have made his head darker, huh? Let's stir up a little indigo. Paint his head black. One more little bit of burnt sienna here. Now, I'm going to turn this so that I can do a wash that fades from dark to light. I'm going to get a bigger brush for that too. Yeah. So there's the dark. Add a little water, makes it a little lighter. Add a little more water. Makes it lighter yet. Just kind of a little gray sky. Clean my brush. So that it's all water basically. Bring that right down there. Where I touch another color, it bleeds just a little bit, and that's fine. I touch some purple that's bleeding into the sky, and a little bit of that burnt sienna that's bleeding in. Before I get too far ahead of myself here, let's... Get 
that. And how big a brush can I use for this next part? Let's again we'll go with a fairly big one. I'm gonna get a little different brown. a combination of burnt and raw umber. The umber comes from Umbria in Italy. The raw umber is just the dirt the way they find it and the burnt umber is dirt they've toasted. So quite literally an earth tone. Somehow I suspect that they don't exactly go to Umbria in Italy to get their dirt, but you might notice I switched to a little smaller brush. I did that mostly because it's clean. And I can keep my bigger brush loaded with the, the combination of the two umbers. And and again, I'm going to get rid of that paint. This time I'm going to clean my brush. Come back with just water and a clean brush and drag that earth tone down in here a little farther. There we go. Now the petals are yellow. Put a little, a little more water in my yellow with an eyedropper. Make the whole thing a little lighter. Stir it up nice and good. Check over here on some scratch paper how dark I am. I'm pretty dark. It's quite the, uh, quite the yellow. Let's try again. There we go. Oh. All right. I go right. Oh, right over those purple shadows. I'm going to bleed into the background. It looks like too. Didn't mean to do that. But it, I like the way it looks, so we're going to call that a happy accident. it in up here and a little bit here on the shine on the light side of the column I think that's where it gets its columnifera it's a column and I think I'm gonna work kind of backwards up this thing I'm going to make a color here. I'll make myself a light green. And this time I'm going to tip it this way. Go 
right up that Just suggest that the prairie is not entirely browned out yet this year. So, uh, one little thing, little detail I could do. Good. Brighten the light side of that beetle a little bit too. I meant to kind of leave it almost white. Take this down in here a little more. Get rid of some paint too here. Got puddles showing up. The watercolor paper that you might like to paint watercolor on is too thick too stiff and thick to really work well for the ink transfer so it's kind of a compromise I'm using a lightweight drawing paper um, I'm gonna Give it the scientific name and then sign it. And date it, 2020. And there is Ratibida columnifera. And should be available in the waiting room. If you happen to like this, you can watch the video of its creation. And, and I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Uh, if you did. And um, again, my name is Mark Zimmerman. You could thank the good folks at Sanford Arts for um, for bringing me into the waiting room and being a little bit of a distraction. Bye-bye for now.